let's say I have a pizza and if you count it it actually has four slices one two three four and um, let's say I divide it among four people well each person then must get how many slices one slice right because four divided by four is one let's look at the next pizza same pizza it's got four slices one two three four and I'm going to divide it among two people so now each person gets two slices four divided by two is two if, if, if each person eats both slices they'll eat the whole pizza right two times two is four but what if um, you get a pizza that has four slices and you divide it among just yourself then you get all the slices right that's in other words four divided by one is equal to four so the point is in order like if you have a pizza and you want all the slices then you can't share it with anybody now let's say you want to divide a pizza with six slices among six people again each person is only going to get one slice six divided by six is one now let's divide a pizza with six uh, with six slices among three people okay well in this case each person gets two slices two times three is six six divided by three is two and again if you just divide it basically just give it to yourself then you get all the slices the point again is in order to get all the slices you can't share it with anybody you have to only give it to yourself which is the one right there for a pizza of any size in order to get all the slices you have to divide it among one person so let's say it had eight slices well if you divide among two people each person will get four slices you've got to only give it to yourself right 10 slices, same concept. 10 divided by 1 is 10. And let's just suppose S represents any number of slices of pizza. You would still have to only divide that by 1 in order to get all the slices. Let's think of it another way. You and your friends owe $100 in debt to the local mall. You hope that you can all equally pay off the debt, of course, but all of your friends bail on you. <laughs> Therefore, you take on all $100 of the debt. So, how much would you owe, do you think? Well, 100 in debt is actually a negative number. We've talked about that before. And if you just take it on yourself, just like the pizzas, you ate them all, in this, in this case, you're paying all the debt, then guess what? You have to pay all negative, you'll have to pay all $100, so therefore, you're $100 in debt. Now, let's think of a fraction. You have two third cups of water. Now, we've talked about before how you could maybe cut that in half, right? And that would be a third. But let's not do that. Let's just say you leave it like it is. In other words, you don't divide it. You leave it at two-thirds cups of water. Then guess what? It remains a two-thirds cup, cup of water. So this, in essence, is the identity property of division. In essence, what it means is what, if you have a number, say 9, 10, two-thirds, what all the examples we just that looked at, negative 100, um, what number must you divide by to end up with the same number and the answer is one the only number you can divide by to end up with the same number is one so a divided by one a being any number is equal to a let's do some examples with uh, real quick together 12 divided by what number gives you 12 so 12 divided by what gives you 12 back and this is almost exactly the same as the identity property of multiplication, only it's division. And the answer is 1. So notice, 12 times 1 gives you 12, like we learned that learned before with the identity property of multiplication. But 12 divided by 1 also gives you that. So 1, it works for both division and multiplication, and it will ensure that it gives you the same number back. Negative 101 divided by 1. We used a little bit different symbol this time, but that means divide. Negative 101 divided by 1 is going to give you what number? The answer is the same number, negative 101. All right, let's look at this one. What number divided by 1 gives you 2.718? So if I take this number, whatever it is, that's what we're trying to look for, divide by 1, and end up with 2.718, what number do you think we started with? The answer is 2.718. All right, how about this time? A number divided by 1 gives you what? If you said the same number A, or any number, you are correct. 
a divided by 1 would give you a back. Okay, now we have a number divided by 1 gives you x. Well, if I divided by 1 and I ended up with x, then I must have started with x. Next, we have n divided by some number gives you n back. Well, if I started with n and then divided by something and I ended up with n, it couldn't have been 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 0, negative 1, whatever. It could only have been one thing, right? If I ended up with the same number, I must have divided by 1. Here we have a term, and it's negative 5x, and I divided by 1. So if I took negative 5x, and we could put in that parenthesis if we want, and divided by 1, if I divided by 1, I must have ended up with what? The same number, right? Regardless of how complicated that term is, even if it was x, y, z, t, u, p, whatever, a bunch of numbers multiplied together, if I divide all those things by 1, then I end up with the same thing. Example 8, same thing for this one, 99x squared divided by what gives you 99x squared? So what number goes in here? Well, if I ended up with the same number, I must have divided by 1, right? Now, we're going to take unknown expression, divide by 1, and end up with 5x plus 6y. Well, if I divided by 1 and I ended up with 5x plus 6y, then I must have started with 5x plus 6y. And in case you're kind of confused by that expression, that just means 5 times some number plus 6 times some number. So if you want to, you can plug some specific numbers in there to see kind of what that would look like. Now we have 1 times something gives you 111. Now notice I started with 1 and I multiplied by something and ended up with 111. It must have been 111, right? Because 1 because um, anything times 1 is itself and the order doesn't matter so you could kind of, if you w wanted to imagine, you could flip these excuse me, and that would still be true, 111 times 1 equals 111 so order doesn't matter, you can start with the 1 and finally, the bicycle example <laughs> we wouldn't want to divide a bicycle by 2 or 3 or 4, right? it wouldn't really work anymore, but if I divide it by 1 and in other words, if I don't divide it, if I keep it the way it is then it remains an intact bicycle. So once again, this is the identity property of division. And what it means is, if you take any number and divide by 1, you will get the same number back. And 1 is the only number that works for that. You can't divide by 2, 3, 4, or 5 and still end up with the same number.